Hey everyone, welcome to this video where we are going to be discussing manual campaigns and more specifically keyword targeting campaigns. So I guess the first thing which should be discussed is essentially what is a keyword targeting campaign. Um, so a keyword targeting campaign is essentially a campaign or an ad where you want your ad to show for anyone who has searched for a particular keyword. Now, this can be a keyword associated with your product or something a little bit more broad, like a gifting term, uh, especially in events leading up to like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Halloween, uh, whatever it may be. Um, and typically a keyword is going to be relevant for your product. You want it to be um, so that if a customer has searched for a keyword, they're going to be considering to click and potentially purchase your product after searching for a particular search term. So yeah, the next, the next point would be obviously keyword targeting campaigns specifically on Amazon can be used across two ad types. The first being sponsored product, uh, and the second being sponsored brands. Sponsored products is typically going to be the brick and mortar of your keyword targeting campaigns. It's the most common ad placement you will see on Amazon. And um, it's most of the time going to get you the best results in regards to your return on ad spend. Now, sponsored brands, that's a little bit more different. Um, sponsored brands are those ad placements that typically appear right at the top of the banner or the search results and typically do have branding as suggested in the name. Um, however, sponsored brands can appear further down um, further down the search results and they can come in a video format, uh, use custom images, which sponsored products cannot do. So both of which ads are, are a great way to drive consideration for your product when somebody's searching for a particular keyword um, and ultimately have different use cases like sponsored products. It is much better for search volume. You're more likely to get more impressions and therefore it's much more effective in driving overall revenue, but sponsored brands, obviously having those capabilities to use things like custom assets or creative assets, should I say, um, being able to use sort of those custom images, um, generate your own headlines. So if you do have a unique selling point, for instance, you're selling a premium sunglass or premium hoodie, you might want to mention in a headline that it's a premium product and have branding to reflect that. Or maybe even a video in that ad sort of showing how your stitching and materials better than competitors uh, and really just trying to sell your product. And um, yeah, combining the both together is typically where you're going to see the best success in growth of your business. Um, again, fully utilizing both of the, the pros to each of which. So where do um, keyword targeting campaigns appear? Um, put quite frankly, a lot of places on Amazon. So um, when you first search for a product, if we are just to go here, we can see um, the, these top of search ads. So when you're creating an ad um, or keyword targeting campaign, you do have the option to use placement modifiers so i could say if my ad is to serve here when somebody searches for men's sunglasses um, i'm willing to pay 30 percent more on a bid um, for me to appear at that top of search one it, in the customer's eyes you're at the top of the search results that's most likely the best fit product um, secondly you can appear on the product pages so if i was to click onto this product here after or if a customer was to search for men's sunglasses click onto this product my product can show on their product pages because it's still derived from that keyword search. Um, and then the rest would just be rest of search. So similarly, where you see sort of these sponsored results here, um, you, you can see them at the top of the search, further down, right at the bottom. And really, it just uh, really demonstrates how much capabilities your, your product will have to show and uh, the ability to appear when somebody does search for a for your uh, targeted keywords. So what are the benefits? Why should I be using keyword targeting? Um, essentially, sales velocity is, is the main one. I don't even have that written down here, but sales velocity, it's, it's so good for it because it's at a consideration stage of the journey. If someone's searching for men's sunglasses, they need or they're interested in a pair of men's sunglasses. You're not going right at the top of the funnel where they don't know what they want. They know what they want. Um, and it can even be a specific men's sunglasses for cycling or men's fishing sunglasses. You can really be as hyper relevant as possible. And that's typically where you're going to see the highest conversion rates and click through rates and ultimately the best return on ad spend. 
Um, so yeah, moving on would be market share. So obviously market share of a particular keyword or within a category, um, keyword targeting campaigns are essential for driving more market share. Um, if we just go back to this example on the next page, um, these guys are all appearing to, to be at the top of search, fighting for the market share in men's sunglasses. Um, if you're appearing at the top of search and you're getting the most clicks and the, the most sales, uh, you're most likely going to be getting the most market share. Um, and not to mention, that if I was serving an ad under men's sunglasses and customers kept on buying my product after searching from that through an ad, my organic results are going to appear further up. So, um, it's going to be less reliant on those ads to achieve those sales under a particular keyword. So through implementing these high converting click through rate keywords and getting those sales, you're essentially reaping the benefits on a long term basis because you're getting that organic traction and essentially uh, that ranking boost, which I've mentioned down here. So, um, yeah, just to elaborate on the ranking boosts, uh, those top of search conversions, as, as demonstrated on the screenshot previous, there are where you're going to get the greatest ranking boost um, than anywhere else. But even if I was to get that sale from a product pages or a rest of search after a customer has searched for my keyword, you, you are going to see some benefit regardless. And you can actually be quite tactical with um, how, how much you want to be spending on a particular keyword. And you can even use tools. Um, the one I like is Data Rover. Uh, you, can, you can basically identify your day by day ranking um, indexing. So how, how you're appearing organically for a particular keyword, maybe after you've increased the budget or decreased the budget, how has that affect where I'm positioned on the page? So the next would be targeted reach, increased visibility. Um, so for instance, men, men's sunglasses, I know I keep using that same um, example, but that's uh, quite a broad term that that could be, as, as mentioned previously, for, for men's cycling, it could mean for just general wear, maybe you're going on a holiday, um, maybe you want polarized ones because you're big into your carp fishing. But um, you, yeah, targeted reach, you're making sure that you are going after your desired audiences, hitting people at that consideration stage of the of the marketing funnel. So, yeah, as mentioned, you can have those longer tail variations of a keyword. And what this is going to do, if I was converting for men's sun, yellow sunglasses, because it has men's sunglasses in that keyword, it might be cheaper because it's a more narrow approach, um, a, a cheaper CPC, so to speak. And, um, yeah, converting for a long tail variation of a keyword is going to help you rank for that seed phrase as well. So as mentioned, men's yellow sunglasses. If I keep converting for that, that's actually going to help my rank for men's sunglasses as well, because Amazon's algorithm will be able to detect that that seed keyword is located within that long tail. So um, yeah, targeted reach, really, really important part of keyword targeting. And essentially, a lot of the time, it's what makes a keyword target effective and ultimately good, where you're going to see the best returns or um, be working towards your desired KPI. Um, the next would be granular control and optimization. Now, when you are setting up a keyword targeting campaign, for the most part, it is best practice to have maybe one, or two or three products um, which you're advertising. And I'd say no more than 15 keywords at most, um, just so that all of the keywords will be able to spend some of the budget and it not be eaten up by the top 10, where the next 20 keywords don't get the time of day because yeah, the, ca the campaign's budget is limited and all of that budget is going towards the top three keywords. So you do have the option to be breaking these things out it's not uncommon to see one keyword and one product to be advertised in a campaign. That way you have complete control over how much budget that keyword can spend on a day to advertise that particular product. And um, structuring your account and your keyword targeting campaigns is really, is, is I, can't, I can't really stress how much benefits you'll get from this because you have that, that level of control and understanding of your ads so that you know if you have increased a bid, what is what is the likely outcome of increasing that bid or what do I need to do to get my click through rate up on a particular product or what do I need to do if I want to see my ranking improve for this product for this keyword so structuring it is, is really important 
Um, and then, yeah, the, the next benefit which comes to mind would be defensive strategies. So there has always been a debate on branded terms and the debate is essentially, should I target my own brand's name in an ad? Um, the, the, the answer for no would be you're, you're cannibalizing organic sales. If a customer has searched for, I'm just thinking what I'm wearing on my top, Under Armour, they likely are going to purchase from Under Armour. So why do I need an ad at the top? Um, and looking into reporting types that Amazon offer, like your brand impression share report, you can actually measure, okay, how much of those top of search ad placements am I winning for my branded terms? And ultimately, um, our competitors get no sales when someone's searching for my brand. So if, if the answer is yes, then I would say, yeah, definitely go ahead and start implementing some um, of your own branded terms in ads, because although it might seem like you're cannibalizing sales, there could be a chance that competitors could get that market share for, for customers who have searched for your for your brand specifically. And the same goes for product targeting, um, which I've mentioned in a previous video. So um, yeah, what makes a good target? I guess we've kind of touched on this, um, but essentially relevancy, um, going back to the sunglasses example, how relevant can you be? Because men's sunglasses is broad, but polarized, men's sunglasses for large head for example is could be a really relevant keyword to your product and you know that you might be more comfortable to spend more on a bid because you're confident that keyword is relevant to your product whereas for something just like sunglasses even more broad than men's sunglasses you might not want to bid 90p per click or cents per click because there's nothing to say someone's not searching for women's sunglasses or sunglasses for skydiving you know like it's the relevancy is, is key and um, yeah, although you are restricted by search volume with relevancy, like we, I think it's safe to say that sunglasses is, is going to have a way higher search volume than men's cycling sunglasses, but you just want to find that sweet spot between the two. Is, is there an opportunity for me to get sales? Is there enough search volume? And is all of that search volume being eaten up by some big brands in the area? Do they have too much share of voice for me to even go after it? Um, and I guess that probably takes me on to competitor share of voice. So, for instance, if there's quite a limited um, search volume on uh, men's su cycling sunglasses, but every time I've searched for that ad or I've pulled reporting from tools like PackView um, and I can see that a brand like um, Oakley own 90% of the share of voice for that, and they're likely going to have way more budgets than uh, a any other brands, frankly speaking, is there actually an option for me to go for this? Is the search volume and uh, all of those ad placements completely eaten up by these bigger brands? Um, am I going to be able to compete with them? So competitor share of voice, although it's not uh, a main factor, I always consider when at least testing them out, it is something to be aware of. Um, because if you have a, a really high bid and you're not even getting those, uh, those bids, I guess, um, yeah, it could be due to competitors having way better ranking and relevancy to that at that current time, making it very difficult for you. Um, the next is just some other KPIs, which I think is, is really important to measure in your campaigns. So you have your ROAS, return on ad spend, um, which is a very similar metric to ACOS. It's, it's just the reverse of ACOS. So as opposed to uh, Ad spend divided by ad sales in a percentage form, it's ad sales divided by ad spend. So um, two, a two rise would be a 50% ACOS. Um, these are really good for campaigns where the primary goal is to drive more sales velocity and to do so profitably. Everyone's going to have a different ROAS threshold or break even ROAS. Um, and it's operating within those confinements and uh, identifying if you are moving in the right direction is this keyword profitable with this product I'm advertising? If not, what can I do about it? Can I reduce the bids, the budgets, or do I need to pause this completely and invest this budget elsewhere? Uh, the next would be click-through rate. Um, and I think this is probably the main driver of or click-through rate and conversion rate, really, of is your product actually relevant to the product, um, the keyword that the customer is searching for, sorry. So for example, click-through rate is just how many uh, clicks you're getting or yeah, clicks you're getting out of the impressions which are being generated from your ad. So a click-through rate of 
five to ten percent can be really strong and you're only getting charged on a pay-per-click ad when someone clicks on it so ultimately um you want a high uh, click-through rate because if you don't have a really high click-through rate as well this can negatively impact your ranking and the same with conversion rates if you have a really low conversion rate for a keyword and product uh, that will negatively impact that ranking indexing which you might have been working really hard to increase um, so I think the main drivers for click-through rate really would come back to that relevancy. Is your is your product picture or that first product image and the title a good reflection of what the customer is searched for? Is it what they want to be seeing? Um, that's what that metric really tells you. Uh, the price point, the reviews, all of those um, factors of your listing they will see before clicking on it and ultimately does it tie into what they're looking for. The next would be conversion rates. Um, so ultimately... Once they're on your listing after having clicked on it, are they seeing those product descriptions that really tie into what they've been searching for? And is your, does your listing have enough images and does it have a video at the end to really sell your product? Um, and then I guess you have things like your your enhanced con, uh, A plus content, which is um, the content below the product that that those main product images and bullet points where you can really tell a story about your brand or your product or why why you have a pattern on a particular section of your product um the next obviously being oh, listing quality product quality um yeah i guess for the most part um that they're, they're really what ties into roas conversion rate and click through rate but ultimately um aren't necessarily too relevant to the target but they're factors you should definitely consider next being search volume as mentioned before does would men's yellow cycling sunglasses have enough of a search volume for me to even warrant spending loads on if i'm ranked number one for that how many people are actually searching for that um, what's my share of voice is there any more for me to get if you don't feel like there is then maybe pull back a bit on your ad spend if you're indexed well organically for that um and then next i guess ultimately is how do i find the best targets um so yep i guess amazon is it's no secret they have a whole plethora of reports for us to utilize um first of which which comes to mind isn't even a report but what what do you know that works for your product so uh, your, your knowledge of the product. If you've launched a product, you've done you, you've done your research. You know exactly what the features of your product are, what makes them better or worse. Um, and with that, you're going to have a knowledge of what sort of keywords customers are going to be searching for to find your product, and you want to be appearing for. The next would be again not even a report, but um, you can just look into what what other products have been selling well of yours, of customers um, or competitors, should I say? Um, for instance, if I've just launched a new range of gym tops and I know that I have a, let's say I'm Under Armour and I have a grey gym top and I'm launching a red one, I know all of the keywords which have done well for that red variation. That might be Under Armour men's gym top. Well, if it's worked for the grey one and it's not specified to colour, it might work for the red one. Um, and then on the flip side, if, if you have red men's gym top, uh, relaxed fit you, you might think okay maybe it's worth me testing out gray men's gym top and just sort of pulling data from your existing campaigns and getting an understanding of what's been working for similar products this doesn't necessarily have to be your own products this can be any product really a competitor's also and also just searching around yourself before you target a keyword you, you should really search for it on amazon see what sort of products are generated what's ranked at the top because that's really what customers are buying the most um, so next is search term reports, which I've put a screenshot of here. You will be able to find a search term report on your campaign manager. Um, if you go down the side to insights and reporting um, and click on um, you know, create report, it will take you to this page here where you can click the drop down and sort of have report types on different things, your targeting, your products. Um, and these will be confined to either sponsored products or sponsored brands. Um, due to the majority of your ads being sponsored products typically. Um, this is where you're gonna get the best data insights and you can play around with the date ranges and even set it as a recurring report. So um, 
yeah, what, what this is essentially going to do, if you have automatic campaigns or keywords already being targeted on broad and phrase, they're going to be generating search terms, which you might not be targeting that exact variation of. So what this is going to do is going to pull a report in an Excel format, which you can put on a sheet and you can start filtering things through um, any search term, which I've had more than two orders for on a on an existing product. Um, and has an ACOS or ROAS above two or ROAS above three and an ACO or an ACOS below 20%, um, that then you can just play with a few filters and straight away identify, okay, these are all the keywords which I'm not targeting, um, which I, I'd like to do so. So again, for existing products you've had for a while, there's still loads of opportunities in search term reports and existing campaigns alone to identify new opportunities for you to go after. And a lot of the time from your search term reports, you're going to be finding lots of long tail variations of keywords. Um, and on the flip side, ones that aren't working, you could play around with filters from a search term report to say anything which has spent over $15, $20 or pounds and not converted and got a sale. Um, anything that's operating with an ACOS over 70%, you may want to pause those, reduce bids, even negate them. Um, so yeah, you can really play around with that. Uh, the next would be the search query report. So search query report can be found or as, as it's called here, search query report performance. Um, essentially what, what this is going to be doing is telling you all of the, the keywords that have done well for a particular ASIN. I quite like the ASIN view on this because you can really be granular with an existing product and say, in February of 2022, how well, or what were the keywords that were doing well for a particular product of yours? Um, and this can be found in brand analytics. So you can go into brand analytics and there'll be a drop down at the top and uh, yeah, it will say search query performance. And yeah, just playing around with those different ASIN views, you can actually get quite a lot of data insights. So if I was to go put on one of my sunglasses variations into here, um, I might see men's cycling sunglasses. Um, this generated X amount of impressions for February, 2022. Um, this is how many impressions I got. It generated this many clicks. This is how many clicks I got. So you can kind of get an idea of, is there scope to get more sales from a particular keyword? Um, alongside implementing keywords that have done well in previous years that might have been paused or phased out of your campaigns just due to seasonality or profitability or stock issues at the time. Um, so I really like this for sort of looking at past data. For instance, we're coming into Q2 and um, I've come into Q2 now and we've got uh, Father's Day in June. So I've got a client who sells a lot of products really relevant for Father's Day. So I might look at this report for June in 2023 and see what keywords we were selling well for and what got a lot of impressions in June that might be specific to Father's Day, which naturally I won't be targeting yet. So um, yeah, it's, it's not like these reports and, and metrics are just for identifying new keywords. It could be identifying old keywords, getting data insights and ultimately anticipating trends um, and patterns and streamlining the keywords which you are already targeting. So I think they're the main uh, report types I use within Amazon. Um, but for tools, you I'm sure you've all heard of Helium 10 Cerebro, where you put an ASIN in there and it pulls all of the keywords that the tool believes are most relevant to your product based on things like your title, your bullet points, description, um, and what you're indexed for. Uh, and then you have uh, data dive and data rover. So uh, data rover, what I really like is you can basically get all of your product ASIN or competitor ASINs, which are really similar to a variation of your product. Um, I have to put that the wrong way. You can get the keywords which are super relevant to your product, put them into data rover, um, and Data Rover will tell you all of the top competitors for each of those keywords. Um, you can start mimicking some of the listings on some of the best competitors. You can even target some of those competitors because you know a lot of the click share from this keyword that you're going after has been going to these top three ASINs. And with that, you can kind of come at getting, um, yeah, share a voice for a particular keyword from different angles, from keyword angle, from a product targeting angle, and then you have um, Data Dive as well, which is uh, an amazing tool, quite frankly. You can 
you can select all of the uh, competitors on a particular search results page, whether that's a search results for a keyword relevant to yours or a category which you're competing in. Um, it pulls all of that in and it will tell you the most popular and reoccurring phrases um, and keywords within their listings and titles and descriptions. And with that, you might want to put some of those keywords in your titles and descriptions, which ultimately is going to help increase your relevancy to the product, um, which does take me on to my last point, which is ultimately, um, how can I improve my ranking effectively? So, um, yeah, I think... The first thing would be having those exact phrases, men's cycling sunglasses in my title, maybe in my bullet points and description as well. That means the algorithm is going to read through your listing, identify that keyword so that when you're bidding for it or someone's searching for that keyword, it, it knows your product's relevant to it. And it's going to make it easy, easier for you to get positive indexing for that keyword over time. Um, yeah, and, and ultimately, hopefully your CPC as time goes on. Um, the higher your organic rank is, uh, it actually turns out you don't have to pay as much in a CPC as someone who might be new to market because Amazon has that trust in your product, obviously always prioritizing that customer purchase journey and their experience on the platform. Um, they're not going to charge you as much if, if you've proven yourself to sell well for that keyword and get good reviews for when people have bought from that keyword. Um, which I believe takes me to the end of my presentation. So thank you all for listening. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.